said it before and I'll say it again. The most dangerous thing about the mill is moving these. So extra care around big heavy logs. Takes a bit to move them. Can't do it with strength. Gotta be with thought and care. It does take some strength. Just angle it a bit depending on where you're going. Little bits at a time, you get a log loaded. Like I said, So here's the business end of the log. Now, I did not get the paint on here quite in time, so we do have a fairly significant crack. So when we're approaching a log, you got to decide really what you're going for. Um, tight rings over here, looser rings there, looser rings that way. Um, I'd like to quarter saw this. I, I know this is going to be a really pretty log, um, but there are some issues with quarter sawing it. So uh, the first one is that uh, we have some very real limitations on the mill. So our sawmill only has a seven inch throat. So that means if I try to place the cut here, I'm seven inches up, the mill's going to run into this and it's not going to cut. So unfortunately, the throat is only seven inches high, um, which ultimately will limit our board width. Now it looks to me like there's kind of a bump here, so I probably want to cut that off. Um, it would probably be good to cut that off almost first thing, but we've kind of over-rotated the log here a bit. So I wonder if I can do that. Rotate it back. Try to slice that off. Of course, you can always slice things off with a chainsaw. But the idea here 
is that if we have So we're gonna cut this somewhere on that plane. That's at least one of our cuts. It may not be the first one, but it needs to be at least one of our cuts. And if we're quarter sawing it, then we're probably just gonna take this off here. Make better pen. And get rid of that. It's not gonna even show up at the other end anyway. But then you wanna actually do something like that. Slice it, four slices on a pot. Once you get your four slices, then we, we stick the whole thing, we stick two of the slices, ideally on the mill, and you start taking cuts. One here, one here, one there, one here, one there, one here, etc. And what that does is it makes sure that in this whole piece, the grain is vertically stacked. Now, you can cheat a bit, depending. Um, I mean, we've got excellent grain stack, like all the way in here. Just beautiful. Kind of depends on what you're doing, what you're going for. Um, let me start turning the log, and you'll see where I take this and how I... Uh, approach this. Sorry, my pen's not working. <laughs> You'll get the idea soon enough. So this is how I've got it oriented. The crack right now is going up and down. I shaved this a little with the chainsaw just to move the log a little further this way. That way the mill doesn't run into it over here. I'm going to take a light cut here. Very light. Um, I've got the other end of the log raised a little bit. That brings the centers more into alignment but the log has a bit of a dip to it so I want to kind of remove that dip but uh, create a flat spot and that's going to start to give us a uh, an orientation point effectively. Wash off the log too. This side's pretty clean. The limitation on the mill. If you can't get the log far enough away, the dog doesn't fit. It's too big of a log. Oh, so you have to cheat a little bit, like I said. Now we got the chubby end whittled down a little bit. Now let's see if we can fit the whole mill over it and take a center cut of some kind. Again, it's not going to be an ideal center cut, but the side we just milled is pretty nice for a flat. So let's keep that at the bottom. Now let me adjust the upright. Put the 
short up where I fit. Hopefully that'll give me a little bit more space. So what I'd like to do, I can't take a cut down here in the crack. It's just too much. Uh, it, it's not, uh, yeah, I... Actually, there's a bit of a hump here now. This side. Why don't I get rid of the hump? And then what I'm going to do is, I don't have to... I only have seven inches, but I don't have to cut to the crack, remember. If I cut to here, I'm still going to get a piece, a slab, all the way across that is more or less quarter saw. So, to he from here to here uh, can be, you know, however much you want it to be. So, essentially you figure out where you want to cut here, go up 4-4, four, four, and then go up 7 inches, and then you know where to cut there to create the maximal throw. How's that? At least that's the way it works on this, on this particular mill. So let's have a look at it from behind as I'm figuring that out. So again, I only have above the blade 7 inches, like max. This beam is in the way. And why they did that, I don't know, but kind of annoying, but that's what we got to work with. So as long as this stanchion doesn't hit this side, we'll be good there. Uh, but I, I need to figure out where that throat is. So let's go all the way down to the center. So that's about center. Now we got four fours, so four turns. One, two, three, four. That gives us a four-four board above center. And then we go up essentially seven inches. So we're at nine and a half right now. We're going to go to 16 inches. Okay. So that right there might actually yield us some usable lumber above that. I don't want to waste it completely. Let's not waste it. We're going to cut either in the front here or stand in gravy. Let's go up two inches. I'm gonna take the chainsaw and just take the, the corners off. So that's about the capacity that the mill can handle. That's right on about it. So finally, we'll take our full thickness cut.
other hand, she gonna be pretty. Be nice and beautiful when this is opened up. <laughs> but it's heavy. Holy cow, this piece is heavy. It's half a log. It's got a clock. Oh. This is not possible to lift. It's so heavy. It's so incredibly heavy. Woodworkers, eat your heart out. <laughs> 